Black Friday isn't even Black Friday anymore. You know what I mean? I don't think there's any crazy deals. I mean, it just seems to all be about TVs. Big, flat-screen TVs. You and a buddy out there. It's not even the middle of the night anymore on Fridays. They want you to get up and leave your family in the middle of dinner on Thanksgiving to go to some store so you could save, uh, you know, a few hundred bucks on a on a 75-inch TV or something. Steve Weiner here from GetRebix.com, and today we're going to continue with part two in our How to Set Up Autopilot, and we're going to take a look at how to make sure we're signing everything correctly to the device so it's all ready when Autopilot brings it up to Intune. Why do people need all these TVs every year? Okay. So when we finished yesterday, we got our test device. Uh, we got the profile assigned. In fact, hold on, let me back up. Uh, this was the test device. It has the YouTube group tag, um, meaning it got the autopilot deployment assigned to it. And we could see here, YouTube enrollment profile uh, successfully assigned. And uh, that's why when it booted, um, it brought me to the uh, branding I, I want to make sure we understand what's being assigned here. So the 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 other benefit to group tags is that you you know you don't have to assign things to all devices. Like l let's say I have things assigned to my M365 dynamic group. I might not want them to be assigned to the YouTube group. So let's take a look and go to device windows configuration profiles. We do have quite a bit assigned to all devices. Um, so what I would recommend doing is so in this case right m365 autopilot settings these are the settings i use for enrollment this is going to all devices because it doesn't matter um this is skipping the uh first logon animation and disabling the user esp we'll talk about that in a minute um but if you if you have anything specific that you want applying to that build only so i'm going to create a policy and uh, let's see here We'll do a real quick one. Templates. Okay. I'm going to do a delivery optimization policy. That could easily be a video all on its own. Uh, so this will be YouTube device. YouTube devices. Delivery optimization. uh behind the same net okay doesn't really matter so i have this policy and now i'm going to go ahead and assign this to the youtube group the important thing to remember is that even though we're looking at a test device this device doesn't even have to exist yet physically right your vendor has it registered for you in autopilot and you see it and you see that it's tagged and you see that it has the enrollment profile but we're kind of setting up what it's going to get because we know as soon as it comes online, it, it's already in that dynamic device group, right? So it's gonna have that policy. Um, same things with our with our applications, right? Um, so for example, I think we have here Visual Studio Code, and this is currently available to all users. Yeah, it's available, but I'm gonna edit the assignment and I'm gonna make it required for the YouTube devices. So now before this device even comes online, it knows it has to get YouTube assigned, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure all your assignments align to your group tag. And if you do have anything assigned to all devices, which we do, we have our autopilot branding. We have, uh, I believe Chrome is assigned to all devices. Um, what else do we have? Firefox, company portal. We might not have Chrome. Uh, Firefox is a failure. Uh, Office apps. So that's so so. Here's a good one. This is only assigned to that group tag. So if I want the Office apps added to the YouTube group, I have to add that here. Autopilot device group. Okay, great. And yeah so like autopilot branding assigned to uh oh, it's the same one hold on 
Okay, company portal here. This is assigned to all devices. So this is uh, my YouTube group tag is going to get it regardless, right? So it's just good to just make sure you understand what's being assigned to all devices versus what's being assigned to group tags. Um, now, one of the big things we do is we disable the user ESP, right? So let's talk about what the ESP is because that is a big part of uh, what makes autopilot successful and where a lot of folks trip up. So I'm going to go back to device windows enrollment enrollment status page. Okay. So the enrollment status page determines what we see when we first uh, sign into an autopilot device and, and go through the provisioning. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at one going through in real time and break down what that means for the settings. And let's do that here. So this is our device that was enrolled with the YouTube tag. Uh, I'm going to use my credentials to sign in capacity.com. So once it verifies that I'm a user in a tenant with an Intune license, um, and, and checks to make sure I have autopilot set up, it shows us this, this is called the enrollment status page. So this is what lets users know what's happening at each phase, right? The most important one is going to be this middle device setup. Now, one of the things that happens here is called account setup on the bottom. That is the user level. So think device level, user level. Now I generally recommend we disable this account setup phase because it's notorious for causing problems. It's kind of unnecessary to the process um, as we really just want our most critical apps and policies in device setup. And then after I sign in, it, it kind of doesn't matter what happens after that, right? I'm gonna be ready to work. So uh, the way we do that is through policy. So if I were to go back here to devices, windows, configuration profiles, I am disabling that through my autopilot settings here. And that is a custom policy. This is the one I did during the, the AMA disable user ESP, right? So just to show that let's edit. And I could put this below. So this is set with a custom policy. Um, the OMA URI is right here, this long, beautiful string. Uh, again, I'm going to put this below and it has a Boolean value of true. Enabling that will uh, disable that account ESP. So now it's in our device setup and it's going through and it's looking for anything targeted at this device. So in our case, it's going to be anything assigned to the all devices or the YouTube group, right? So anything here, so where, where people have um, autopilot failures is because there's something here that's getting in the way of things. So the best way to look at this is it'll do any PowerShell scripts first you have assigned. It'll do your configuration profiles, right? That's security policies. Any dynamic certificates like SCEP certificates, uh, if you have trusted roots, we'll go here. I don't, so that's why it's skipping. Okay, now that was pretty fast and it was only waiting if you noticed for zero out of one app. So where did it get that from where it said zero out of one? Well, let's go take a look. So if we go back to the ESP, I'm gonna edit to open up the settings. Um, so real quick, just going through these, this is your max timeout. Um, mine is set to 45 minutes to be, uh, you know, I, I know nothing's going to take that long. The way I have my lab set up, it's usually about 15, 20 minutes. You saw that was about five minutes. If that you can leave that on 60, it really doesn't matter. We know this will help accounting for varying bandwidth. So if someone does have a poor internet connection and you know, we're typically at the 15 minute mark, this will give them time. So if you leave this at 60 or 90 minutes, um, you know, not, not a big, not a big deal. Um, do we want to show an error? If it times out, sure, you can customize this. We definitely want to turn on log collection and diagnostics. I'm going to talk more about this in a um, one of the upcoming series. It's just going to all be about how do we diagnose this. 
Um, only show to pay only show this when a device is provisioned out of the box. I prefer this to be on yes. Um, this way, this is not going to happen if I'm just onboarding a device in Intune from existing fleet. Block the device until all the apps and profiles are installed. We're going to say yes, and that's what kind of held the device here. We don't want to use our signing in until what we require has been installed. Now, let's get down to this what we require. Um, block device until all app required apps are installed if they are assigned to the user device. So we want this on selected and then we get to pick what we want. So notice for us, so, so here you can hit select apps and you get to choose which apps. Now this will not affect assignment. So we only saw zero out of one. So I'm pretty sure that was autopilot branding. Let's go back and look which apps were assigned. Um, so windows, so autopilot branding was assigned to oh nope m365 devices uh so it must have been the remote help then so we actually so there we go we kind of flubbed up because we didn't get the autopilot branding and that's very important so where is our remote help at properties all devices okay so let's make that change so so this is kind of my point here right even though the, the enrollment status page is saying hey block while this is being installed, it still has to be assigned. Adding it here won't assign it. It'll only tell it if you are assigned, please wait for it. So that was a good example. I'm glad that happened. I'd like to say I plan that, but mistakes happen. So now we're going to go back and we're going to assign um, our autopilot branding. We're going to add our group to it. Uh, and whether something should be all devices or the group, right? It, it, it depends. Uh, best rule is, look, if you have an app or a policy and it has to be on the device, um, regardless of the build or what else is going to be on it, something bare bones, that should be all devices. Save yourself the trouble. Um, in this case, I'm just going to add the group in to not make waves in the tenant. Um, okay. So now that it's assigned, it will wait for it on the next pass. Um, when we go through it. Is there anything else we want it to wait for? Um, we can set it to wait for Office. If Office, if the Microsoft apps are assigned, which they should be, because we just assigned them. Yep, B2 Multipipe devices. Okay, great. So now it should be waiting for three apps. So I'm going to hit save and we're going to get another machine booted up and see what that experience looks like. Okay, so with our updated enrollment status page settings, we're gonna go ahead and log into um, another device, same group tag, same user, just to show you the difference here, and uh, kind of walk through what we're seeing. We should be seeing it take a little bit longer in the middle. Keep this up here so we can walk through what we're seeing and check this out okay um yeah i mean so device preparation just so you know there's a few things happening here this is where the tpm attestation happens um you know if you have um you know that that's that's required for bitlocker if those are your settings this is where the device um gets its naming convention even though the object already exists this is when um it technically makes sure that this is the object that it was given by autopilot and it truly and true id joins or azure id joins okay uh, now we're on these details here you so see you can see it's when it says identifying it's going through the process of figuring out what uh what policies and profiles uh it has to set itself on the device like i said certificates any network configurations like wi-fi um you know any land stuff you're pushing would go here uh so once these all identify and push it'll move on to the apps and we should see it start with zero out of three because we are holding it to the three apps autopilot branding into remote help and the microsoft 365 app suite which is office all right so you can see here now it's on zero of three so it started the app process uh going through that and it did listen to what we said. So yeah, it's gonna count these three and it's gonna go through that. And as long as we know that everything installs, which is, uh, it will here, 
because we know that these do you know we don't have to wait for the whole thing um the real question is uh you know what happens when they fail and that'll be in our in our troubleshooting piece and of course it's going to skip the account setup because we're doing that with policy okay it kind of flew past um uh having the first one installed now we're at two of three installed clear you know we're obviously speeding this up so you don't have to sit here um for the whole time although it's only been about three minutes so not too bad even though it's super exciting watching me watch a screen just breathing waiting for turkey up oh, and there we go now notice that's where it stopped because we're skipping the um user account part with the policy we made and there we go all right so it's important we don't confuse setting up autopilot with setting up intune um a lot does go into making sure once the provisioning is done the device is set the way you want and that's all in intune but as far as autopilot autopilot is really the act of taking what we've set in intune and tailoring it to what happens during that provisioning time so that was uh the device doing what we want everything going smooth what happens when things don't go smooth we're going to start taking a look at that when we come back um after the turkey the day of the turkey and we're going to look at part three, which is going to be about troubleshooting. In the meantime, if uh, you're doing autopilot, if you tried this, it worked. If you have things you want to discuss, you, uh, I almost said YouTube, Discord, whatever this is, is right here. We can go from there. Who's cooking the turkey? One, two.